Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Langless and I'm a customer success manager and software developer for IBM. Thank you for watching my very first IBM Cloud instructional video. I'll hopefully be making many more of these in the upcoming year, so stay tuned and let me know if there's anything specific you would like to see. Getting started, I'm going to show you how to use webhooks with Watson Assistant and Cloud Functions. So this tutorial is going to assume that you already have a working knowledge of Watson Assistant and Cloud Functions and have created a service instance of each in IBM Cloud. The purpose of this tutorial is to cover just the webhook portion. So if you're unfamiliar with either Watson Assistant or Cloud Functions, um, check the video description for some helpful tutorials. No worries if you're not an expert because we're just going to cover some relatively basic tasks. Um, in addition, you'll need a couple of files from my GitHub repository, as you can see here. Uh, you can find the link for this in the video description. So just make sure before we get started that you download the gitlightstatus.txt file, as well as the webhookdemo.ml.json file. Let's get started. Next, from the Watson Assistant Skills page, you're going to click Create a Skill, Dialog Skill, Next, import skill, and then choose the JSON file that you downloaded earlier and click import. For this demonstration, the chatbot is supposed to help the customer check the status of their flight or book a new flight. So you can see the two intents here that cover that. We also have two entities, airline and airport, that we'll interact with later. Keep in mind that this is not a complete chatbot example. Under System Entities, please make sure that at sys-number is turned on. We'll be using this for our flight numbers later. Let's get to the dialog. You can see that it only does two things. It checks the flight status and it books a flight. Okay, so let's show an example. Let's say I'd like to book a flight to Paris. We'll wait for Watson to finish training and then ask, I'd like to book a flight to Paris. It would then ask what my preferred airline is and so on. Let's say I want to check the status of my flight, flight AA456. So I'll type in what is the status of my flight. Here you can see that Watson Assistant has realized that AA is an airline and 456 is a number. Now say we want to go to an outside system to actually retrieve this real-time information. This is where cloud functions come into play. So let's open up the dialog node. Here you can see we're using slots, which is a way to gather information in Watson Assistant. This can be enabled or disabled via the Customize link here. In our case, in order to check a flight status, we need an airline and a flight number. So Watson Assistant will check to make sure both of these pieces are present, then save them as context variables, which are the variables in the Save It As column. Now we want to pass this information along to an outside system to check the status. In most cases, we do not already have an API set up to handle our specific requests with specific parameters. So instead of a public API, we'll use Cloud Functions to create a REST API to get the data we need. Let's switch over to Cloud Functions. Assuming you already have a Cloud Functions service instance created, open it up and click the Actions tab. From here, you'll click Create, Create Action, then give your action a name. I'll call mine get-flight-status and click create. From here, open the get-flight-status.txt file that I asked you to download earlier and copy the entire file. From GitHub, if you click raw, then you can just copy the plain text. Now we're going to go back to the cloud function, paste the whole thing, and then make sure you click save. Before we go into what this code actually does, let's enable it so that it's accessible from Watson Assistant. So from here, we're going to go to Endpoints, then click Enable as Web Action, and again, make sure you click Save. Once you've saved it, copy the URL that appears underneath, and then let's go back to Watson Assistant. Now, we want to use our newly created API in Watson Assistant. So from here, we're going to go to Options on the left-hand side, and then click Webhooks. And this is where we're going to paste our URL. One important thing to note is you'll need to add .json to the end of the URL so that Watson knows you're returning a JSON snippet. Since this is a public webhook, we don't need to add any headers. So now that we have the webhook and Watson Assistant linked, 
how do we actually pass the information from Watson Assistant to the webhook? Let's go back to the dialog. When we enabled slots, the dialog ensured that the user is providing the information that we specified. In this case, it was the airline and the flight number. So Watson is going to save both of these pieces of information as context variables, right here. Since number is a generic term, let's change this to flight number. Make sure you capitalize the N as it will come in handy in just a second. Let's go back to the Customize button and slide the indicator next to webhooks to On, and make sure you click Apply. Now we see in our dialog, dialog node a section has appeared, then call out to my webhook. This is where we specify what information we want to pass to the webhook. In this case, it's the airline and flight number. The way we do that is through context variables using key value pairs. So because we saved the context variables as airline and flight number, as you can see here, you will enter them here like this. Start with the name of the value as you want to refer to it through the cloud function, then enter the context variable that holds the value for it. Since it's a context variable, make sure you put the dollar sign in front. So in this case, airline is the key, and then the context variable that refers to the airline is also called airline. We'll do the same thing for flight number. I know this seems a bit confusing, but hopefully it will all make sense in just a moment. Now Watson is going to take these values and pass them to the cloud function that we just set up. So let's switch over and see what happens. I'll briefly describe what this code does. Here you can see a main function with an input called params. Params is the data that the function is getting from the chatbot. Here you can see params.airline and params.flight number, which is the data that was saved in context variables that we're getting from the chatbot. The cloud function is then going to concatenate them and pass it to a switch statement. Now obviously this isn't a real flight status system as it would be a lot more complex, but this just shows how we're going to take some input data, do something with that data, and then return some data. So if we pass in AA456 as the input, the web function should return AA456 is 10 minutes ahead of schedule. You can see that in the return statement. Let's go back to Watson Assistant and see how we deal with that data. Here the return variable by default is webhook underscore result underscore one. Scroll down a bit further and this is where the assistant will provide its response. We don't need the first line so let's just delete it. If assistant recognizes that the webhook returned a result, then we want it to show the result. So here in the response box, we can actually return the literal response by entering webhook underscore result, underscore one, dot message. Assistant saves the webhook's response as a context variable formatted as a JSON object. You can see here below. So we could just pass that directly to the response. If we wanted to pass the whole JSON, we could, but in this case, we only want the message portion. So that's why we do webhook underscore result underscore one dot message. If assistant does not get a response from the webhook, then anything underscore else will be recognized and we can say error or something of that nature. Let's try it out. In the try it out pane, enter what is the status of AA456. You can see assistant recognize the airline and the number, which is the flight number. So let's go back to the webhook. And you can see it returned exactly what we wanted it to return. So now let's try something that may return an error. Let's try, uh, what is the status of AA789? When we go to the webhook, you can see that there is going to be no match for AA789. Therefore, the default, which is the error, will be returned. And it says an error has occurred. That's it. Now you know how to create and use a webhook in Watson Assistant.